Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today to do my January wrap up. Ugh. It's a lot of books. However, I haven't read anything since the end of January. So these are in fact all of the books that I have read this year because I was moving. <laughs> this is my new apartment. You may not be able to tell. I guess you can tell. I mean, it is different, but like same couch, same shelves, same books. So like you this isn't super different from what you're used to seeing. Uh, yeah, this is the first time I'm filming a video here. And hopefully soon I will be reading a book here for the first time. <laughs> that hasn't happened yet, but I'm very nearly done unpacking. So I'm hoping to vlog next week, doing a reading a vlog in my new apartment so you can see it once it's, it'll be not quite finished next week, I think. Uh, based on when stuff I've ordered is supposed to arrive, etc. But it'll be like very nearly there. Enough for, for me to vlog. So anyway, yeah, January wrap up. That's what we're here to do? Great. <laughs> so the first book that I read in January and therefore the first book that I read this year was Nosferatu by Joe Hill. Uh, please stop. Yeah, this, oh man, it's been so long. <laughs> uh, moving itself, like it's, I mean, I've been moving for a while, but also it's just kind of all that I've been thinking about. So my brain is kind of not in reading mode or filming mode, which is probably apparent to you. I'm sorry. Any whoosies, yeah, no, for us who I read the first <laughs> week of January and so it'll start all the second week of February. So forgive me for not being crystal on this. <laughs> but basically this is a horror book that is about this like vampiric creature um, whose name is Charlie Manx and his license plate fittingly is Nosfer R2. Well, Nosfer A2 in America, the British, uh, the UK copies say Nosfer R2, which is funny to me. <laughs> like, why couldn't they be Nosfer A2? I guess that's not how they pronounce it. It's so funny. Anywho, yeah, so he steals children and takes them to Christmas land, which is basically like, it's kind of like his like mental Neverland that's like Christmas themed. And he takes kids there because he's like sucking the life out of them. So he's like a soul sucking vampire, I guess. So this is a really long book. Well, it spans many years and it follows both uh, Charlie Manx and his henchmen and like his exploits kidnapping children, as well as this young girl. Well, she starts off as a young girl and then you see her as like a teenager and then as an adult. Um, uh, and, oh fuck, what's her name? <laughs> Victoria Vic. So she's kind of the, I don't want to say nemesis of Nosferatu because that makes him sound like the protagonist, but she's like his match. She's kind of like, her life keeps putting her in his path and has kind of like woven their stories together. So it's kind of like her versus him. And that's kind of what this whole book is, but it spans many, many years. And yeah, that's basically what this book is. Um, I think it was quite meandering. Uh, and it took forever because I kept thinking, okay, so like we've caught up now, enough backstory, so now this is where the plot is going to take place. And then we would skip again a bunch of years. I'm like, okay, just kidding. We're not there yet. And then I'd be like, okay, but now this is like the age at which stuff is going to happen. And then we would skip ahead again. And I was like, All right, okay, well, I, I don't, I can't like latch on to a character's age or time or place because we keep moving past it. So I kind of wish it had just kind of like settled and dug its heels in to a particular age and setting. I think that format of it does lend itself though to a TV series, which is what it's been turned into. I haven't seen it yet. But I think the style of that storytelling is more episodic, which is good for TV. I thought it was good. I just really couldn't connect with the characters. Like I feel like it's important to really connect with Vic in order to like really get into this. And I just didn't. I felt really cold about Vic. Like I didn't dislike her. I just felt nothing for her. Um, so like when she was in dire straits or when she was like challenging Charlie Manx, I was never like, oh no, I was just like, uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> I liked some of the minor characters more actually, and there wasn't in that much of them in it. Damn it, it's been too long since I read it, but L Lou, I think, um, Vic's fella, <laughs> he's not in it terribly much. Um, he's a pretty important character, but I liked him a lot actually, and I kind of wish, I mean, honestly, if it had been him versus Charlie Manx, I think I might have liked it better. Uh, I just, yeah, I just, I couldn't really like connect with Vic and that kept, and this is a long book to be reading where I can't connect with the main character. So I thought it was well written. I thought it was interesting concept and very atmospheric and, and darkly humorous. I just, 
I didn't feel anything for Vic. That was the main problem, the main barrier for me. Next, I had no such barrier. I read Robin Hobbs' Your Royal Assassin, which I buddy read with Mara, and I did post a review for this already, because uh, I managed to read it and film a review for it early in January, so had that in the can. So yeah, that, that review went up pretty recently, so you probably saw it, and if you didn't watch it, then you clearly don't care what I think about this book. Uh, so I was just like, I gave it five stars. Love, love, love Robin Hobbs' writing. It breaks your heart in the best way possible, and I am so stoked to be reading more Robin Hobb, which is why I hauled like an entire stack of Robin Hobb books, because this is gonna be the year where I just read a buttfuck of Robin Hobb. <laughs> Next was a reread of The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. As I mentioned at some point, I'm planning to reread all of the first law books uh, leading up to the release of the newest and last first law book, which is the third book in the Age of Madness trilogy, which comes out in September. So I'm kind of doing one a month, because that pretty much puts me on target for that. I also, in addition to just wanting to reread it, want to film standalone reviews for all the books, which I never really did. I, I filmed reviews for the new ones, A Little Hatred and Trouble with Peace, but I've never filmed just standalone reviews for the first law books, other, all the other ones. So, I mean, I probably could film reviews for them without rereading it, but I just figure, let's reread them, let's do the reviews, let's just, let's fucking do it. This is my fourth time reading <laughs> The Blade itself. <laughs> yeah, I'm fucking love the first law, so I, hopefully I'll be more articulate when I do film my review. Uh, next I read The Girl the Sea Gave Back by Adrienne Young, which I had been on my shelves for a long time. I really, really didn't like it. Um, it was the, like, the dullest thing that I've ever read. I, I'd heard that it wasn't as good as Sky in the Deep, so I was I went into it with fairly low expectations. I was just like, well, as long as it's kind of vaguely Viking-y and a bit atmospheric, like, that's the bar that I'm setting for it. And it, it didn't even uh, pass that bar. It's just so... It's honestly lacking in atmosphere. And I also didn't connect with these characters. And I like looked up some reviews after because I was like, is it just me? Like, am I having an off day? But no, a lot of reviews were like, they were just so blah. Like the characters were just like, there was nothing to them. So it was really, you didn't really like feel like you were in this world with them. You didn't feel anything for them. The magic was kind of like, eh. And like the plot, like there really wasn't a plot, like really much at all. And it was a short book, but it felt like I was reading it forever. And I think I actually read it all in one day, or very nearly. Because it's short, and I also just kind of, at some point, I was like, well, I just want to be done with this. It was just so... <laughs> Whenever I read my books, I think I've mentioned this before, while I'm reading it, when it's a book that I think I should like, and I'm not liking it, I'm like, do I not like this anymore? Is this not my thing anymore? And then I pick up a book that does it well, and I'm like, oh, just kidding, no. I do still like this. That was just a bad book. <laughs> so... Yeah, I, I did not care for this. It's Sky in the Deep was already like, eh, like if you love Viking vibes, then you're probably gonna like it. But there's like not much more to it than that. This didn't even deliver that. So nah, that's a not from me. The next book I read was a reread, and that was The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden, um, which uh, Bethany actually, I think, reread in December. Because when I posted, when I went to go rate it on Goodreads when I finished it, I saw that she had written a review. And I th pretty, I think it's on my TBR that I said that she and I are gonna buddy read The Girl in the Tower. Um, I think I loved this more the second time. Like I gave it four or five stars the first time I read it when it, when it came out. And I needed to reread it because like it's been like three or four years now. <laughs> so I, if I wanted to finish the trilogy, which I do, um, I was like, I definitely don't remember enough about The Bear and the Nightingale. But I remember, I remember the time feeling impressed but not feeling much, if that makes sense. Like, I remember it was a much more of, like, in my mind and less in my heart that I was enjoying it. Like, mentally, I was like, I like what you're doing here. I like what this is representing. I like how this is interwoven. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this, like, intellectually. But I wasn't feeling that much when I was reading it. So I think I gave it four stars because I was just like, I love the project of this. You, like, well done. But I didn't feel anything. This time around, I felt so immersed, so drawn into this world, so wanting to keep turning the page, I couldn't put it down. Like, I definitely didn't feel like a page turner to me the first time I read it. The first time I read it, it felt like this, like, cool book, but one that I'm just, like, gonna pick up and read a bit. This time around, I, like, I wanted to keep reading so much. And I don't know if it's because it's the second time around or because I'm different now or what it is. Like, I don't know if I had read it for the first time now if it had, would have been more like my first time reading it and it was just purely the first time through, that's how it goes. I don't know, there's no way I can know. I suspect it's a combination though. 
a combination of it being a reread so I know what I'm getting myself into and two just being a slightly different person than I was four fucking years ago. Any whoosies, if you haven't heard of this, it's a Russian folklore inspired kind of fairy tale-esque fantasy book with much more sort of like a magical realism style to the magic as opposed to like a hard magic system or anything. It's not like wizards and MacGuffins, it's you know, it's spirits of the earth, spirits of the forest, spirits of nature, kind of clashing with Christianity. And uh, having grown up on Latvian and Russian fairy tales, it feels very nostalgic for me and very familiar to me, and very beautiful to me. So I think if you love folkloric wintry vibes, then this is fantastic. The next book I read was another reread, and that was The Wolf by Leo Carew. This is my fourth time reading this as well. And I will be reading it a fifth time later this year because of reasons that will soon become known to you. Um, again, I, I did actually post a review for this the first time I read it. I have since then mentioned it many, many, many times. So I think you know how I feel about this. And if you don't, the fact that I've read it four times and I'm going to read it a fifth time, it's really all that you need to know. <laughs> that speaks for itself. The next book I read was The Black Company by Glenn Cook. This is not... I mean, the Black Company is just like one third of this because this is a bind up of the first three books in the Chronicles of the Black Company. So don't be too impressed. I didn't read all of this. Um, I read it because it was my pick for the Blades and Bodice, Blades and Bodice Rivers Book Club, which me and Amanda host. And the live show where we discussed this and Mara and Bethany joined us uh, was on my channel earlier this month. So you may or may not have seen it. Again, I suspect if you didn't watch it, then you don't care what I think about this. All of us hated it to a greater or lesser degree. I was on the greater side and I think Amanda hated it. I low-key hated it. Mara like basically hated it and Bethany was like didn't love it. <laughs> so we were not impressed with this or Grimdark but um I'm, I'm sure I'm glad that Grimdark took off even if the the progenitor of the genre was kind of the worst. <laughs> Next I read uh where the World Ends by Geraldine McCaughrin? 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 Cochran. By this lady. And this is based on a true story. There's this island, uh, this really remote island in Scotland where um, I guess the reason they go there um, is like they're, they're harvesting the, this particular kind of bird and from the bird you're yeah, able to like use its feathers, use its oil, like it's a really like highly sought after resource or it was back then anyway, back when we needed things like oil for lamps. So there's this small island where these people live and then an even smaller island near there where it's literally just the birds are there. So then like once a year like a boat would go over to bring over some people to like they drop them off where they would spend you know a week or two weeks or however long it is like gathering all the birds and then like a week or two later then the they'd send the boat back to pick them up except they didn't pick them up. So these young men were stranded on this island with no idea like why no one has come for them and they're just stuck on this rocky island with nothing but these birds so like they have food uh and there's some kind of water source so like they're able to survive but on this like just basically this little pile of rocks in the middle of the ocean and so like they're like did the world end and we were left behind because we were on this fucking island so it's um it was an interesting book and I, it's written in this style that feels very much like one of these people is telling it because it's told in this very kind of like filled with colloquialisms and filled with like this very regional patterns of speech where it doesn't feel like uh, an omniscient kind of person is telling you about this it really feels like it's being told to you by someone who's like from this rural place and their worldview is of this place and the way that they speak the way they explain things the way that they describe things is colored by where they're from. So it's a really, it's kind of a strange writing style for that reason, but I quite liked it and made, it made it more immersive in my opinion. So I would recommend it. It's an odd little book and it's more interesting, I think, to me for the fact that it was a true story. And there's a little author's note at the end explaining which parts she took liberties with and which parts are absolutely true. So I, I would recommend it. The next book I read was Things in Jars by Jess Kidd and I was quite disappointed with this. Oh wow. This was a book of the month January 2020 and I read it in January 2021. Kind of cool. I don't know if it's cool but interesting. Is it interesting? I don't know. I just something I noticed and decided to share. You're welcome. I, I expected this to be more mysterious and more curious and more atmospheric and it, it like had all the things 
Like it had, if this was a recipe, it had all the ingredients that I expected and wanted. It just didn't really like taste very good altogether. <laughs> so like, uh, it's about, it's sort of this like Victorian, you know, like back when, like there was this like fascination with the sort of oddities of nature and like curiosity cabinets where like people would actually collect sort of deformed creatures in jars or, and like they thought that maybe there were unicorns and mermaids and they'd collect bones that like seemed to be the bones of a mermaid and like this was like a thing. So this book is kind of taking that um, up a notch to where like there are some kind of magical things possibly going on. So the main character, she's kind of like a, a PI investigator type, but she sees a ghost. So like he, this ghost follows her around. And so she's investigating this kidnapping of this girl who may or may not be some kind of like a sea creature siren mermaidy type thing, whether or not you believe that. And so it has all those things, like the, the curiosities, the oddities of nature, this like badass heroine who's like this lady investigator. It just, it just didn't work. Like it, it wasn't funny to me. It wasn't mysterious to me. I felt nothing for the main character. I was just kind of going through it and being like, it's a lot of cool window dressing, but like, I'm not feeling this. <laughs> I, I do not feel intrigued. I don't feel immersed. I don't feel like curious about what's going to happen. It also, it did keep kind of like spoiling itself. It kind of kept showing you different perspectives. Like of the kidnappers and of the sort of different pieces, like the different people who are, have a stake in this, I guess. And I feel like that made it less mysterious. Like sometimes that can work. It's not like I always hate that. Sometimes it can add something to where you know more than the characters do because you're seeing all the sides to this. This was not one of those times. Like what little mystery there was, was immediately ruined by the fact that you know what's going on, even though she doesn't. So, it just, yeah, it, didn't really, it wasn't terrible or anything, and I can't really put my finger on why it doesn't work for me. Other than, I mean, the writing style was a little weird and choppy. I just, I felt nothing. <laughs> and I just, like, kept not caring about anything that was going on. And that was really frustrating to me. <laughs> I was just like, blah, 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 okay, you found the thing, blah, 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 you're in danger, blah, blah, blah. Like, I just did not care. <laughs> and the last book I read was this thick, heavy monster, The Evening in the Morning by Ken Follett. Now, I was I did really like this, but it wasn't exactly what I expected. I knew this was another of the Kingsbridge books, so like he wrote Pillars of the Earth and then he wrote a prequel which was World Without End. And this is like a pre-prequel, which is still like it's this like fictional place called Kingsbridge that he's invented where he's telling different years of history. I've never read Pillars of the Earth or World Without End, but I've seen the adaptations of them. Now, it is true that this is sort of the era of Vikings, but there wasn't much Viking-y about it. So when I went into it, that's more what I was expecting, was more, um, I, I mean, because he's telling these Kingsbridge stories, which are from the perspective of the people on sort of the Englishy, like not that it's called England at the time, but you know, like that would be the side of things. You wouldn't obviously be on the side of the Vikings, or at least I didn't expect it to be, but I expected more interaction with Vikings. They're, they they appear and they're mentioned and people are affected by the existence of Vikings. So it's like it's there <laughs> but it's it, they weren't really a prominent part of the story. But that doesn't make it a bad book. It's just not what I was expecting. I picked it up because I was looking for Vikings. No one is shocked. And it's definitely not a Viking book. It's not. <laughs> it's very much in the, in the vein of the other two stories like the adaptations I've seen which I understand are fairly loyal. And I had a comment from someone when I said that I was going to be reading this saying that like Ken Follett basically retells the same story. He just like names the character something else and sets it in a different era, but it's basically the same story over and over again. And having seen Pillars of the Earth and World of That End and now having read this, even though I didn't read those other two, when I like got further into it, I was like two thirds through and I was like, you're him, she's her, you're him. <laughs> like I recognized these like these archetypes that he's created for his stories and it works it's a good story i can kind of see why he does it uh I mean, I mean he might not even know he's doing it but like i well i was like well i know yeah like i see that that's going on here i can't disagree but it is compelling i did think it was a really good book and like it was slow to get into when it, when i was still figuring out all the sort of pieces of it but i i really did enjoy it and it kind of stuck with me more than i expected when i finished it i was like that was solid and I found myself thinking about it more like in the days after, which I wasn't expecting to. It didn't feel like a book that would like stick with you, but then it did. <laughs> so 
it's it's quite a sprawling epic historical epic i will say it was kind of odd to me the descriptions of like uh intimate encounters being written in a way that felt like it was a history textbook but then we also just like paused to be a bit randy for a second like it just felt it made me feel so uncomfortable because it didn't feel like a passionate love making scene and it wasn't like a clinical kind of you know fade to black like fyi sex happened like it was in between <laughs> it was like a professor describing passion but like it, it was weird <laughs> so i could have done without that because i was just like what <laughs> Why though? <laughs> Any hoosies. Overall, I did really enjoy it and it made me kind of want to go and now read Pillars of the Earth and World Without End because I really liked this. And those are all the books that I read in January and also all the books that I've read so far in 2021. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of the books that I read, if you liked them or if you hated them, or whatever you want to let me know. I post videos on Saturdays, other random times as well, but definitely Saturdays, so like and subscribe and I'll see you when I see you. Bye.